probably one of the freakiest dudes I know, so he's perfect. And he's uh, <laughs> about to have his own amp show as well. The one and only Jason Lee. Woo-hoo, Welcome woo-hoo. to the show. Welcome. Hey, yo, you know what's crazy? I remember when I was straight, Adina Howard sat on my lap and my dick got hard, but it was so long ago. I don't <laughs> even know where she is. <laughs> I miss Adina. Yeah, that's how old I am. Yo, first of all, Adina Howard was bad, bad. Yeah. She, she was. I mean, she probably still is. She just I mean, old, I'm old talking about like 94, 95. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like when she, when that song came out, black bra lit, and then she was just shorts. she was like probably one of the first like liberated you know black artists that was just mm-hmm. like I like dick and all that type like yeah. she was really out there and um you know Jason Lee tell me more of this well, story. She used, to have, she used to wear she used to have a collection of one, uh, one piece spandex outfits. That's all I really yeah. remember her and the short Halle Berry. How did cut. you meet? How did she get on your lap? Because. Oh, well, she, see, when, when I got out of foster care, you know, they let an animal out the cage. I was in the street. So every time there was a local fair, a concert, a performance, I would go. Yes, and yeah. Adina Howard was somebody that used to come to Stockton a lot for whatever reason. Every and <laughs> yeah, summer jam, summer splash, summer get together, like <laughs> the summer cookout. <laughs> Adina Howard was there. Freak Like Me was a huge song. And uh, I just liked her. She was always nice to me, though. I haven't seen and her. And you just like got you, working your Jason Lee magic. And you got to Dina Howard and, you know, you're like, give me a lap dance. Yeah, I've been a master finesser my whole life. Yeah, first time mm-hmm. I met Jason Lee, uh, I think I was, it was at Diddy's White Party. Yep. And I was with uh, my wife at the time. Yep. And he, just, he like, he charmed her. He, we took pictures. Uh, you, you can see that picture on, online if you Google it. Uh, and I was like, this, and I don't even know how, but like he knows like Queen Latifah. He yeah, knows like all that- these people. But meeting you and Mariah was the fastest accident I ever had in my whole life. I'm going to tell you, I was on stage with, at the time, it was uh, Lindsay Lohan during her cocaine era. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Demi weak. Moore, uh, Met, Meta World Peace, Tyrese. It was that was most, a crazy party. Ran, it was the most random, amazing party ever. And a, as I'm getting ready to leave, they say, oh, Mariah Carey and Nick Cannon walk in. So I'm like, well, shit, I'm going to wait. And then I was walking down the stairs. They were walking up. I literally said, Mariah Nick, I'm huge fans. Look. Took a picture. The picture came out perfect, and then yeah. I said a couple things and walked away. And she was like, "He's so nice." Yeah. <laughs> and then now later, here I am. But yo, man, your career, like uh, watching. I mean, I guess what the first time people may have seen you was probably on Love and Hip Hop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were one of the first people I ever seen throw a drink. Yeah, you know, I threw that drink like um, Tom Brady. You yeah, know what you, I mean? like, you, it you hurled too. that shit. And that's when you were a publicist, right? No, I was, was, a, I was like a connector. Like, I was the person that if you needed a plug, like, okay, I want Chris Brown. Okay, let me call Chris. I would put things together and just take 10%. That's how I really got introduced to the business because I had a 9 to 5 working, making probably 120000 a year. Then I made 30000 in two days. I was like, yo, I'm out because <laughs> I thought hilarious. I was rich. You know, right. I made 30000 So I just started being the plug. And then when I started seeing the boom of social media and tech and the dot-com and blogs and all that, I said, yo, I can get in the space because I know people. And I just thought I would unlock Hollywood in a way that would be different until the industry didn't really fuck with me like that. Then I was just like, fuck everybody. The guns blazing. Yeah. You know? And then cause well it's interesting because I'm thinking about my journey of Jason Lee. You know what I mean? Where again meeting him for the first time, kind of seeing like, oh this dude, he's he's one of those connectors, you know, those people. There's a lot of people in Hollywood that are like that. And I thought that it was whatever they, they portrayed you as yeah. on on love and hip hop, I was like, gay dude. yeah, yeah. I was like, is this like I, I was just trying to figure out what they were th- trying to portray you as? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I actually got a chance to know you because you had your own show, and I know you were working uh, with Floyd. Yeah. Uh, and you used to pretty much do what we're doing here before a lot of people were doing it. I, I mean, I was it even called a podcast back then? It was or? called a podcast, Hollywood Unlocked Uncensored. That was uh, me, Melissa Ford, and Giovanni. Yeah, that was uh, the early days. And that was just creating a show where I could say what the fuck I wanted because Love & Hip Hop, they edited it. And I never really understood that, like, reality TV isn't always as real as you think it is. And so- It's not real at all, to be It's honest. not real. <laughs> and and honestly, when they when they edited me, they had an idea of who I was. That's not who I thought I was. Um, and then I did two things. I created a podcast so that way I could do whatever I want to do and say what I want uncensored. But then at the same time, I then played into being the bad guy because that's who they wanted me yeah. to be. So I was like, yo, I went from three episodes the first season to 14 episodes the next season because I turned up. Yeah. And, and I felt I like working. they made you more like the stereotype. Like they were trying to make you a lot gayer than you actually were like are you that trying w- to get me to you trying to get me to attack vodka no no we're not gonna do that we already did out. that this morning okay okay 
No, but but to your point, I made it clear going in, I was not going to be the stereotypical accessory to a female. I'm not going to wear handbags, makeup, and high heels. I'm not going to be like sister girling you down. Yes. I'm a real nigga from the Bay Area, and I'm going to walk into any situation, no matter who it is, and no matter what they say or do, I'm going to just be me. And I think they couldn't really handle it because the reality that they were developing got really real. Every time I walked around sex, yeah. I was like, yo, your ass just got out of jet when you don't even have a bathtub. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, nigga, you suck dick. Stop playing with me. And, I, you know? and that's Jason <laughs> Lee. He does not give a damn. I don't. Uh, we recently just had a, a conversation on your show uh, that was going it was this is what i felt like when i was on the jason show i'm gonna just say a bunch of shit and all of this shit can't go viral yeah. you only can get like one or two things oh, nick you pour condoms on your head everything yeah. you did went viral <laughs> <laughs> but because of somebody that you know I, I rock with and even going back to that very first time i was on your show shouts out to danielle who connected us and i was oh, like yeah. yo he seemed like a real dude whatever it is and he asked me on that episode like yo give me a job put me on wild and out and i said okay and because I thought he was funny, I thought he was, you know. I you know was, I was joking, right? <laughs> yeah. I put like, that I was, motherfucker I was, on Wild and Out. I was 323 pounds, completely insecure. What? Yes, 300, yeah, I'm cute now and fucking rich. <laughs> <laughs> you know, money, know, money right. changes things, more, baby. Like. <laughs> you know, dick got bigger too, by the way. That is a true thing. Is that really? That is what a true thing. Do? I mean, I, is yeah, I mean, I, we right just had a whole dick conversation. Maybe I just look at it more. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, but no, I was insecure. And then, you know, you have Nick Cannon who's done so much for the culture, so much for black people, so much just, you know, sitting there. You know, you you're a little nervous. You start just saying a lot of shit. I was like, yo, like, get me out the hood and loving hip hop and put me in some mainstream shit. I want to get on MTV while now. Can I, you give me a job? And then I went to Hawaii. Did I had just interviewed Jennifer Lewis and she had talked about manifestation and she went away on a trip and manifested blackish. So I went on the balcony. I was like, yo, nigga, like, <laughs> to God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With God. Yeah, got yeah. It's amazing. Like, <laughs> nigga, get me, get me out of here. Like, free me. You know what I mean? Like, give me. And then, literally, I swear, it sounds like a movie. I got on the plane, flew back, and the only text I had was from Nick saying, You ready? You know, check your email. And I had a five season contract. Wow. Let's go. He killed it. Every time, speaking all the way, so that in the 20th season coming up. But why y'all didn't release the first episode? Of what? The. Wilding out that I did, where I asked to suck your dick. In front oh, of the yeah. World. No, that was. <laughs> Yeah, that man. was the best. Yeah, yeah Abby, that was too Abby, much. You Abby, go too far Abby, sometimes. I'm sorry, this Jason. is way before you calm down. Yeah, oh, God, I'm <laughs> no, loving this. That was that was the best performance I ever did, and the I reason I was so happy to be on I, the episode. But yeah. the reason why I bring it up is because you know, being on Wild and Out, you do the whole boot camp thing where they warm you up and they bring the vets and intimidate you and all that weird shit, you know. And I wanted to quit. I, I, as thug as I think I am, my gay thug <laughs> ass went and cried. Like, I was ready to get I the know. fuck out of there. I cussed I everybody out, and Nick wouldn't let me leave. Oh. So I, I went into my first episode terrified, and I just said, I got to break out of my shell. So they I'm didn't just, air that? Hell no. What? what I, I think they, because again, like I was telling this morning, some, at this point, I don't even pay attention to that. I don't see it until <laughs> the world sees it. What? So I thought that, I didn't think they took that out. Well, but. not only did I ask him to suck his dick, I took his sucker out of his mouth and put it in my mouth. Yeah, and I was like, oh. <laughs> it was a lot. Oh, oh. Yeah, it was a lot. That's good. That's but good. But I got that first laughter and that first roar, yeah, and it, yeah. it literally took away all my fear, oh, and it, it made me very comfortable to the show. Yeah. And tw now we're at season 20, and I think this episode, episode that Jason Lee uh, is I a star of is season. gonna start so much controversy. Terrified. Uh, I'll, ha I'll have the link to it in 15 I'm minutes. Terrified. But we play Plead the Fifth and I, I bitch out in this game all the time because I, I done got in so much trouble over that game. I just know I, I plead the fifth. I don't want no smoke. But Jason bet people thousands of dollars that he would not plead 5, the fifth. 5,000. He said 5,000. I was working amazing. for that 5,000 too. Each. And they asked him everything from stuff about Nicki Minaj. Celebrities. We ain't even, because I, I, I just want to see what makes it. But even the Nicki Minaj beef that is, everybody knows you and Nicki have been going, that's your team Cardi and, you know, or what, I don't know how. I don't I'm care. team, Jason. stop fucking playing around. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> every, every, you know, I grew up in the era of Queen Latifah and Missy Ellie and Foxy Brown, Lil' Kim. Women were getting their money. Women were advancing hip hop in the, in the whole inclusion of women in hip-hop and i think now as cardi came through and opened up a lot of doors for a lot of the women we see today she's and nikki you know holding it down for years when the industry didn't allow a lot of women to exist i just felt like stop being a bully and that's where it started and then when she tried to bully me i was like okay i'm gonna show you who got the bigger dick so i didn't have a problem going against her because i, I don't make my money from 
the industry giving me con- like I got contracts, but it's all based on shit I own and partner. Like if you Talk don't, shit. yeah, if you don't, if a Nicki Minaj never comes on my show, I'm still gonna be fine. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be so, okay. but but you do acknowledge that she is the greatest she's, female she's rapper to ever to do it. Greatest, I have co- accomplishment wise. Greatest ever. Yeah, accomplishment wise. We'll look at Jason. Lee. She don't have a Grammy, Cardi. I mean, that's the only thing, and that's a, unfortunate because she she, she deserves a Grammy. Like a Grammy. See, the problem she should have a Grammy, and the problem is when we get in these conversations, we start saying who's better than who. Like you can say Queen Latifah, Open Doors, MC Light, Yo Yo. You can say you know Little Kim was the blueprint. I mean, yeah, yeah, all these women are great. Nicki Minaj is one of the best artists ever. Not even just female, just yeah. artists in hip hop, and she's Fact. gonna go down as as a legend, but she won't become an icon until she stops becoming a hater. So she's a hater, and that's okay. But I, so are you. Of course, but I've made a career <laughs> off of being a but hater. He's you know honest I mean? about his haterade. But I own it though, like I own it, and that's yes. the problem. People can't digest the fact that I can walk in a room openly gay in a room full, like I'd be walking in a room with like DL guys, and I'd be looking at them like, I know, I, I want to set you free. I want to liberate <laughs> you so bad. <laughs> I want to liberate you so bad. So how do you know? So you have like a DL radar? Yeah, is no. that the look in the eye thing? No, 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 no. Are see, they looking at no. you like I want Jason? Because see, like, see how Nick can look at me. A straight man can look at me. A DL man, they ain't making no eye contact, so they get the shuffling and shit. I'm like, what's really? your discomfort level today? <laughs> Yeah, but I'm see. I, I, I look at myself that. like a gay therapist. Like I will help you through your gay. You know what I mean? <laughs> However, physically, emotionally, you know. But Can yeah, I just give you a mouth hug. Oh wow, <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> She's hilarious. I'm gonna fucking use that. I'm gonna walk so up to sweetie. Kelly O'Brien and be like, "Nigga, I got a throat hug for you." <laughs> Not a mouth. You made no, my day. Thank you. No, but I think you know with the whole Nikki thing. Like I, the beef then became with her fans. I'm over that thing. But see, because this, this, the chat is full of fuck the uh, bars. Fuck no, them. don't say that. Oh, fuck the bars. No, I'm a bar. Oh, Jason, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm not a I'm bar. A bar. I, look, the other day I kissed this nigga online and happened to be playing Nicki Minaj in the background. The bars went fucking crazy. He's a fucking fan. I'm like, I am a fan, bitch. <laughs> damn, I was drunk. I didn't know what was playing in the background. No. I'm afraid to even dance to Nicki songs in public now. Cause Cause I, they I hosted a gay club last week and they played like Nicki, 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 but it was so many dope tracks. I started dancing. I'm like, yo, is this a Nicki song? They're like, yeah. I'm like, okay, I'm like, I can't dance. Cause as soon as they get a video, they're gonna be like, look at that little bitch up there dancing. No, her, when I say her fans or us and Barb's are we like, it's certain <laughs> fan groups that just don't fuck around. They write hard for their It's game. the Barb's. It's the uh, beehive. the beehive. The beehive. They they hate me. They've been hating me forever. Mm-hmm. Really? Uh, well, he made crazy. a comment about Bruno, Bruno Mars, Mars being better like, than. What are we talking about? Well, we will say better. You, I you said, said I'd rather. Oh, oh, Nick, you did. Oh, yeah, that was some it bullshit. It was crazy. I said I'd rather go to a Bruno That's Mars not concert than a No, Yeah, you you did. You definitely uh-uh. said Bruno had more hits or yeah. something. I like said that. Bruno yeah. had more. It was yeah. some real. I still stand by. Well, it. you you clearly have not listened to yeah. the library of thank Beyonce. Oh, yeah, but we're, but me and Blue Ivy and the rest of the Beehive will forgive you. Yeah, yeah. thank you. I yeah. love Beyonce. I know Beyonce. You sound like Anita Baker right now. You know, she said ba- Babyface was on my show yesterday. She had the audacity that, you know, and I know she's the old grandma. Her and Dionne Warwick need to be, they need to have their Twitters deactivated. These delusional ass senior citizens running around. <laughs> I let, will no, not let you sit here and disrespect the queens. First of all, Anita Baker sings with a microphone and a cord attached. And you know anybody <laughs> singing some shit like that is psychotic. How oh dare she went, God. she went and said that Babyface, Kenny Edmonds, Babyface hates a Beyonce. It's just delusional. <laughs> I can never listen to Anita. I usually get a massage to listen to Anita, but now I'm going to be restless because Caught that's just some bullshit. Of love. Well, <laughs> shout out to all the amazing queens that are doing it from Nikki to Anita to Beyonce yeah. to Cardi. We, to Lotto to Ice Spice to all of them. Yeah. Who's the hottest young rapper? I right? think Ice Spice, Ice Spice? Ice Spice is killing it. Over, over Lotto? See, here you go with that bullshit. <laughs> Lotto, you start the bullshit Lotto's too. mad at me right now, so I'm going to just keep it cute. But like, All was, of them get mad at you at some point. Well, Lotto got mad because I said she was dating 21 Savage, but I mean, she is. And I don't, think, I, don't, I don't know if the issue is that I told the truth or the fact that he's probably in our country illegally because he's using the, the marriage that he's in outside of Lotto for the citizenship that he probably shouldn't have. But listen, I don't want no problems. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't want no problems. Wait a minute, he's married? Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he yeah, to stay in the country. You know how they be, how the Africans be paying people in Atlanta <laughs> to um, get a citizenship. They give him the thirty thousand in Rolls Royce. Well, he, I don't know if he did 30, that, but I think he really Royce. loves Lotto, and he should. She's beautiful. She's talented. She's gorgeous. Mm-hmm. I mean, she's everything. She even got a song with your um, your baby mom. Ex-wife. Yeah, yeah. The, but uh, but, but the, it wasn't enough for him to leave his job. wife, and I think that's because the federal government 
will probably deport him because you know he almost got deported when he got that charge back in the day. I don't want to keep talking that's about like, Jason. Yeah, how do you know all of this? Stuff? Like you got he just you. Went through his files I've seen right you now. like kind of <laughs> break down a story. Like who who are your sources? How do you unlock Hollywood so much? Man, you know. <laughs> Everybody likes to talk to me. And when you get to meet me, I think I think I'm one of the most likable people in the world. I do talk a lot of shit, but that's only for entertainment. I I don't ever really think about any of this stuff when I'm in my private time. Friends will bring up a person and I, I don't want to talk about nothing, but when I come to work like this, I'm gonna talk about it. My yeah. team all day long is writing about the best and worst of the industry. And I will be honest with you. I'm not a fan of it like I used to be. So like right. I've set this whole like I want to be retired in seven years thing. Like yeah. where I've put out a plan where I want to be completely out the game because it's not as fun as it used to be. I get attacked for everything. So then you just get to a point where you're like, you know what? Fuck it. And then you just start just talking about what you think. So I've watched you grow from not having paper and hustling and trying to get to it and saying you want to get to this place to building your own empire to being able to say fuck it i don't care and now you're saying in seven years you're gonna be done with it all yeah uh and from our last conversation it's like the goal is to get more high frequency mm -hmm. more and, and be positive that type of growth but still having to be in the thick of the mess it's hard so yeah like how do you determine like right, i'm gonna start some shit all right i'm gonna let jesus handle it well, I told Yolanda Adams that the battle, she said the battle's not yours, it's the Lord's. I said, no, the nigga told me to handle it, so I'm going to go ahead and take. <laughs> That's what you told Yolanda Adams? I did. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I love oh, Yolanda man. Adams. No, you know what? I just I just had this whole uh, reconciliation with the culture. First of all, the culture is in, in critical condition because uh, nice. cancel culture is fucking up the art. It so is. you can't really say faggot. You really can't say. You just said it. Well. I'm gay, and there's some faggots in my community, and that's okay. We know what it is, because we be looking at each other like, you a fag, which y'all can never say. And that's the crazy yeah. part. I really feel like we need to get, now Demi Lovato this morning is she again. She was they, them, thou, there are. She done took the Bible, every script in the Bible, and took all the acronyms or pronouns or whatever the fuck, She's verbs and pronouns. I don't even know what it is at this point. See, I we think you're too, this is the problem, Jason. <laughs> you're too real for this industry. Right. So that's why I work for myself. Yeah, but even but that you that you that's a magic trick because and I've been in situations with Mr. Jason Lee that people were like, no, we can't hire him. No, we and I'm like, Who, I'm gonna hire him. I don't know what you're talking about. Or like, no, we don't talk to him. Or no, and it's like those they try to blackball and cancel and all that type of stuff. And you prevailed a lot of that. Like yeah, how, one, how did you do it? And then two, like, I mean, are you not afraid that somebody else is going to come and try to, you say the wrong thing and they're going to snatch your whole platform from you? Nope, because they already tried that. Remember Karen Civil tried? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> but she that, failed. But I mean, no, but, yeah, but, but, that's, but, I'm but, talking but, about but, the but, but, real powers that be. I remember, <laughs> so this is this is why I always show love to Nick, and Nick always shows love to me. Nick wanted to create Wild and Out Unlocked, which would have been like a show adjacent to Wild and Out, infusing Hollywood Unlocked, where I do interviews. We actually shot pilots and all that. Yeah, yeah. It just we got shot, shot down. Yeah. It got shot down or whatever. Um, but look how the Lord works. I have my own show, The Jason Lee Show on Revolt, and then I interview Chloe Bailey again, who I had interviewed for Wild and Out Locked. I yeah. mean, I really feel like we get caught up in the, the no's and the cancellations and the you can't haves, and somehow that dims our light to where we think we can't just go create ourselves. When I was at uh, VH1 Wild and Out, uh, I was, I mean, VH1 um, Love and Hip Hop, MTV's Wild and Out, I tried to go to the VMAs, and this publicist at Viacom named Kelly. I can't remember Stop her name. Stop saying people's names. She's, fuck Kelly. Well, huh? <laughs> Fuck yeah, Kelly? fuck, Ke yeah, fuck, fuck Kelly. Kelly. You know, <laughs> she, 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 she's this white publicist over there, gatekeeping the culture. But okay, no, love white people. My mom white. She died though, oh, so I guess I don't have to love white people no more. But I do love white people. Oh, you still forever love no, your I mama, love, Jason. I love white people. I love white people. I love white people. I love all We're of you. Okay. I love you. I love you. <laughs> hey, all white people. No, she denied me access to the VMAs. And so I said, you know what? Um, if I can't find a seat at the table, I'll go build my own table. So I yeah. built the Hollywood Unlock Impact Awards. Uh, you know, that's dope. It's coming up, right? Yeah, it's coming up. We have Tiffany Haddish hosting, uh, Whoopi Goldberg being honored, Chloe oh. Bailey, uh, a bunch of people. But um, Whoopi's go is she gonna be here? I can't say that oh, she's gonna be here or not, but she's uh, being honored. That's dope. I mean, Whoopi. I didn't try to get Whoopi to get on a plane many times. Whoopi don't be fucking with none of that. Whoopi don't even like to answer a phone call. <laughs> yeah, but, but shout, she's the greatest. But she when you is. think about it, I, yeah, I'm not worried about being canceled because I really feel like God, whatever's for you is for you. And I'm, what I am on now is that I don't have to do the live, low vibrational 
animalistic shit I had to do to really bulldoze my way in because I've arrived, I've done it, people know me, I have the relationships, and now I'm just gonna give my opinions just like a Howard Stern or just like a, a, a Joe Rogan or, or anybody else who has the freedom to do it, and just yeah. because they're white, should not mean that I'm the villain because I'm black. And so I'm gonna keep doing it. And look, if I don't get every single opportunity, like Tamron Hall hasn't brought me on her show. Not Do y'all beef? No, there's no beef. I see her at Essence Festival, a couple cocktails in, it's like, you should come on my show. And then when we call the booker, say no. But yeah, I know that now the, the, That's the, the Hollywood blacks talk. are the new Trojan horse, yeah. right? You gotta yeah. watch out for the blacks. <laughs> yeah. You're so busy watching the whites, the black folks <laughs> feel some type of way. I could have been through Tamron Hall under the bus, like when she tried to get Floyd Mayweather's phone number. I don't know if she's Sorry, married or not. But go. why would I put her <laughs> tea out there? Uh, but why? Why would I? Why would I put her tea out there? Because then I'd be messy. Yeah. <laughs> and that's not like you. Not at all. Not, not at all. So, but no, what I throat have coach, witnessed. Throat coach. Because there, uh, there was a time where I saw you wanting to play the game. And you wanted, you know, even there, and there was conversations about Jason Lee, you know, um, filling in for Wendy Williams yeah. in that spot. And, you know, for a while, you know, there was a lot, a lot of us that were up for that conversation. And, I even pretended like I wanted to be in there, made a mistake of trying to do a daytime talk show and like that we'll get into that later. <laughs> but you everybody was like, yo, Jason Lee, it could give you the tea the same way that Wendy could. And, mm. and you know, we all we we love her and she's irreplaceable, but you would think someone like Jason every day on, you know, syndicated television, ten AM, eleven AM, that would be fun and you went down that route, man. And Tell me the relationships to do it. It yeah. feels like a better fit than 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 me. Say it. <laughs> I was gonna say sh you got it. I think it's okay to be black, but not black. <laughs> well, no, well, what was you, the thing? No, why couldn't? Thing why didn't was, that happen? The thing for you? was okay. I had not only. I I think I've I've kind of built my name and built the credibility in this space. The reason, as Wendy did, I mean, the way I built the relationship with Wendy, I was such a huge fan, still a huge fan, become a friend, all that. But I went to her show as a fan to sit like on the cam off camera seats. And when I walked in, her whole audience just went crazy. So she's like, who the fuck is this? Right. That's how we became to know each other. So she came over and introduced herself. And then since then we just became really close and she's done my show and I've been on her show several times. So we had built a relationship. We had a bigger digital presence than Wendy. We had more relationships, um, you know, uh, that, that she couldn't necessarily get to because of the style of which her show may have been. Yeah. So when she couldn't do the show, they called me. Shout out to Lonnie at uh, Damar Mercury, he called. Yeah. If y'all know who Lonnie is, go, go do your research. You know, this is an old white man. No shout out to no, no shout out to white people. Um, but very disconnected from culture, not really understanding. He knows the, the the mechanics of TV and brand advertising, all that cool. He's been doing like, it for a long time. But the pulse he worked of, on my show, too. But the pulse of, like, what's next, what's hot, what's now, I think he's lost that. And he asked me, he called me, and he said, um, it's, it's, um, he said, hey, Jason, today's your lucky day. I thought maybe I want a car or, yeah. you know, he said, I'm going to invite you to host the first week of the Wendy show, season 18. I said, oh, that's great. You know, what do you, what do you got? I said, well, why don't we do Tiffany Haddish co-host with me on Monday. We'll bring Cardi B on Tuesday. Let me see if Mariah Carey will pop in and surprise Norman on Wednesday. We can do me and Tamar co-host on Thursday. Because he knows all these people. This is just like what I can do on my phone. He said, oh, that sounds amazing. So who's going to co-host because you're not big enough? <laughs> that. <laughs> Nick, huh. I don't go on auditions because I don't like being rejected. That's why I've just created all my own shit. That was yeah. the first time I think I felt like rejected. I felt disrespected. Mm -hmm. I felt that I wasn't validated. And it took me back all the way to my childhood. I'm going to tell you, it triggered all types of shit. That's right. when I said, you know what, fuck it. I went and built my own studio. I was my about own to show. say, from that, though, you then said, I'm going to build my own shit. Yeah. You now have and own your own studio in Hollywood. Yeah. That you do your podcast and your television show that is on you know, uh, a black owned network yeah. and is e extremely successful, the Jason Lee show. Mm -hmm. So you still have your own show yeah, yeah. and you do it on your own terms. So I think that testimony in itself that you didn't wait to get accepted or hired by someone else. Uh, you took that pain, all those triggering uh, yeah. uh, things that come up and said, instead of, you know, going into a space of depression or or saying I can't do it, you went the opposite way and built something on your own. Or giving up. How many black dreams have been put to, put to uh, have been killed or buried because somebody told them that they weren't good enough? I mean, when I, one thing I will say back to your point about playing the game, I'm gonna blame Kevin Hart for that. And I texted him yesterday and I said, Kevin, 
you told me to sip more cappuccino and less tea, and this shit is fucking whack, and I'm going back. <laughs> back to the, to the tea. Back to the same. Because as you evolve, you know, you don't want to scare everybody away when you do what I do. Like, when you talk about what's out there, you know, when my business gets out there, I just kind of laugh at it and move on to the next thing because it is what it is. I'm in the game, so I get it. But I, I felt like the evolution that people want me to do is to, like, overly consider what I'm going to drop. Like, there's shit that I've, I've given so many people grace. I'd be looking at people posting them and their families online, and I'm like, that. nigga, you only did that because I allowed that to happen. Mm. If, I, if I did my job every fucking day, do you know how much NBA penis is going in pussies that they don't even fucking know, but then they post them in their fucking families like they're the poster child for black excellence? I'm like, you bitches are fake. Now, if I show up and really do me, I can't go to no NBA games, but, that, but then again, I don't fucking care But anyway. that's power. It is, but you know what? It's the discretion, it's the discretion of 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 considering the grace is the g grace I want to give to folks is also like I don't want to be the villain attacking everybody but people are doing shit all day long including me that don't want it to get out but 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 you get to a point where you're like yo I'm gonna get killed anyway they're gonna say I hate black women if I talk about Nicki Minaj they're not gonna say anything about Rihanna loving me Queen Latifah loving me all these other black women I employ black women nobody's gonna say anything about it they only focus on the negative so if I overly consider which black woman I post about then now I'm not being true to the game that I play. I chose to play in this sandbox. So, but I also don't need to get on the ground and roll around with the pigs every day. So I just, I'm, I'm in a place where I am evolving and I think I've done as much as I can do, at least for now with the culture. And now I'm, I wanna bring other people along for the ride. I wanna evolve my audience. I want to bring people who don't know the culture into the culture and I wanna bring the culture into spaces where it doesn't exist. So it goes yeah. back to saying that you're just a little too real or too honest. Mm -hmm. Because, and I, I want to know, like, it's certain people that you will protect, and it's certain people that you consider friends, uh, and and you'll fight tooth and nail when someone's uh, attacking them, even though they may be in the wrong. And you know, I've I've seen you try to defend me before. Uh, it doesn't always go over well, but but or even uh, other individuals. How do you pick and choose to be like, I right, well, I'm gonna go spill this tea or someone? Because sometimes when and I've been in this base because where you're like and i've told you this but man i thought you're supposed to be my man like what like how the fuck are you gonna say that or allow that on your platform when again i'm a big boy i'm an adult like if i do some dumb shit i know people are gonna call me on my dumb shit i have no problem be uh with accountability but in this game that we play that is all about like it's an image it's it's whether the level of media it's supposed to be manipulated uh for the likes or the views or for the dollar so when you know that it can actually affect someone's career yeah like and you have that power to start some shit to throw somebody up under the bus or i'm gonna just keep quiet like how do you one that's some crazy ass power but then two how does that like how do you rest easy at night knowing like <laughs> how I, do I rest easy very comfortably my house is amazing. Uh, it's very beautiful. It's Lots of cameras. Just rich. With a fan on. I, rich I, I off, just, of, I, you know, I, off of tea. Nick, Nick, I'm at this point in my career where I'm just deciding which level of my house I want to sleep on. Uh, uh, talk your um, shit. But no, you, okay, first part, how do, how do I choose who to protect? You know, proximity changes perception. Mm. You know, when I started working with Kanye, everybody was saying Kanye's crazy, Kanye's crazy. And there is a certain level of crazy that he has, a certain level of crazy that we all have, right? right. We all don't have a megaphone. On and you were the head of media. Head of media and partnerships for Ye. Yeah. Yeah. But that was an evolution, right? Like I, I met with him. I, you know, he got into a fight with the paparazzi. I was there the night that all the dinner and stuff happened. We had dinner the next night, um, and then I. And this was post or your relationship with Kim Kardashian. This was post. Oh, yeah. and and that was post their relationship. Well, you messy, man. I mean, no, 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 <laughs> no. My relationship with Kim came as a way of my relationship with Rob and Chris, and then it just evolved. And I like Kim, and I, I still like her. I just, I'm, I'm in a But y'all not cool no more? Well, I think she feels some type of way because- uh, You got cool with Kanye. I think partly that, and then Tracy, who was kind of her media put pitbull. Shouts out to, Cra Ch Shouts out to Tracy. Well, Tracy is- the, I love Tracy. She's part of the problem. No, she's not. She manipulates the media. She tried she's to- She's a brilliant- she, PR person. She tried to use me to destroy Jordan Wood, so let's say that. She, oh, you know, she shout out to Tracy. She's definitely a manipulator. We love she's Tracy. Great. She's great at what she does, but she ain't ever tried to come for me because if they ever play that game with me, I'm, yeah, I, yeah, they, they know who they can play with. They've never met anybody smarter and nastier at this internet than me. 
I welcome the fight. I do. <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah, I do. You do. I've seen But, you, you know, I think the re the way we fell out is Kim and Chris found out that I had connected with Wack and had access to the mother sex tapes. And then when they found out that I found out. Yeah. Mother sex tapes? When they yeah, find you out. You wasn't around. This, trust me. When they find out. Deep. When they found out, Chris Jenner call, uh, texted me some old crazy shit. And I had to tell her, one day you're going to meet somebody that don't give a fuck. And you just met that person. You may want to back up off this phone with that texting bullshit. <laughs> you know, but anyway, shout out to you, Chris. <laughs> Um, no, it but, gets deep. But the with the with the with the but uh, proximity changes perception. Once I got with Ye, I saw the crazy, but I also saw his heart, and I also saw a black man fighting for his children, and I also saw a lot of other dynamics. And so I was able to have a different perspective on him. I backed away when he started going way left because yeah. all lives do matter, but black lives matter, and not enough. And that's a movement that. And also, we know Kanye just says shit. Um, yeah. And doesn't think it through, and and then he also is a brilliant mind that wants to stir the pot. Yeah. So there's a balance of like, oh, he didn't even know he said that. Yeah. Like, and then there's something like, oh no, he definitely knew he said that, but he said that to make you uncomfortable. But standing up for you when that whole Viacom shit went down was the easy thing. One, because we all know you, we know your heart, we know how you love everybody, I but do. we also know how pro-black you are in front of and behind the camera and we know how much you've done for black people and black talent well so, what i learned from that most wait wait but so let me say so i didn't feel an obligation to yeah. defend but i also felt uh that it was the right thing to do because again i understand the politics of the industry that this that the audience doesn't know you know i know that i love being on love and hip-hop I didn't love throwing drinks and I love being on Wild and Out, but I also knew that BET is not owned. Well, now it might be owned by Tyler Perry, but it wasn't owned by us. And so when I understand issue, the politics like, yeah. of all of that, um, you know, it just it was something that seemed easy to me. And then when I looked at a lot of our friends who weren't speaking out, I was like, all of you Uncle Tom as house <laughs> nigga. But, but want to ride the coat to hold on, Nick. Don't shut it down because there's a lot of your friends that you probably are still friends with. You know, they find it easy to ride with you during the good times. But for me, what matters is when I'm in the trenches, like Floyd Mayweather say, I, that motherfucker rode with me through everything. He don't give a fuck. And every time I go viral on some crazy shit, he be like, you should do this. You should do that. You know, <laughs> right, like, right. You know it's people that you just got to ride for because they got to ride for you. And that's just what I'm about. So. And uh, to your point with like a lesson that I learned, and I, was, I talk about it a lot. And uh, even on, you know, I got a new show coming out where it's solely focusing on cancel culture and you know the counseling the of the lessons we can learn from that i learned it ain't about what you say because we all say bullshit it's about what you do it's about how you live and how you walk and then when people can truly see your character and see who you are and i think that's what jason is talking about whether it's the yays of the world it's the the, the who the tiffany haddishes it's the every every day they're trying to get rid of someone but if you know that person like you said in the, in the proximity of that person you know that person's heart you know that part, even as you know jason's been you know they tried to cancel him many times <laughs> uh but if, he's a good dude uh messy than a motherfucker yeah. But, that's but I, I welcome the cancellation. I want it. I want all the fucking smoke. Because even when I leave here after promoting this show, I get on a plane to go to France. I meet with all the CMOs. That's the motherfuckers that got all the money for every brand from Visa to Amex to Pepsi to everything. And I'm going to go with, go out there and just do deals. And while people hate, but this is what I also understand. The culture that I promote and love and thrive for every day is the same culture that tries to take me out and so that's why i have to start broadening my audience to bring more people into my experience because i i was at uh, i got honored recently for all my advocacy for foster care by tiffany and then uh, this white woman walked up to me the head of a network and she said i have never met you but i loved your point of view on a threesome i'm like will you watch me talk about that <laughs> she's like yeah because if i was ever to have a threesome and they want me to put two dicks in me i'd want them to suck the dick too this is Whoa. a this is a corporate White. Well, this is Freaky Friday. I know that's right. Well, I no. don't agree with whatever the fuck you just said. <laughs> she was the president of a network. Of course she but was. But this is somebody who I would have never thought, like, you listen to my craziness, but you know, like, there's people out there that. that yeah. Now, well, again, let's, let's dig into that a little bit because your platform is that. It's unadulterated, it is raw, and uh, this is Freaky Friday. And I don't, whatever you just said, I didn't even need that visual. I don't. But you don't care, and because you live the experience that is unorthodox and it's you know t not traditional to to most. Being what, what an part openly of my life gay, ain't traditional. You're an openly gay man in Hollywood, right? So I, damn near trying to just out all the everybody out no, here. No, I, I don't out people. That's the thing. I really don't. If well, the, when y'all see this wild and out yeah, episode, right well, that one, that one, <laughs> that one needed to be outed. Uh, 
Let's see nah. if I got this episode. Oh, I have the episode. You got the episode? <laughs> oh, shit. Ladies and gentlemen. Wait, and can we just say, can we just say for all the all the barbs watching, because I know that you all live on Amp Radio somewhere deep in the trenches. They run they Amp Radio. Really they don't do. run shit. Uh, yes, we do, Jason. <laughs> well, well, you're the good barb. I'm talking about all the fucking terrorists. All of you listening, please go and find my channel and show up because we do have a segment where you're going to be able to come in and shoot the shit up. They can yeah. come and say whatever they want on my show. Oh, you're going to have, you going to have people going crazy yeah, they in the can, chat. There's a what segment. is it going to be called? Is it at Jason Lee? No, or is no, it? Yeah, at, at the only Jason Lee is my, my thing. But um, yeah, the, the daily drop. So they can actually pull up. There's a segment where they can come on and say anything. And I'm not dropping anybody that has anything negative to say. We can go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, whatever oh, you wow. want. And you're going to actually, like, bring, because, you know, we bring callers in all the oh, time. They, be, oh, they say crazy shit. Every day. They can it's say live. Whatever. No, no screening. Just think. Oh, I'm definitely know. tuning in. Yeah. When when you going to start? June 26th. Oh, shit. Jason Lee. Uh... The daily daily drop. The daily drop. But what time? 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. But be ready because I'm gonna. So go right after us, y'all gonna go fuck with Jason. Oh, oh perfect. Oh, that's we follow good. you guys. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. So hold up, because I'm, I'm I'm looking. Uh, this is the segment I'm talking about, <laughs> and I'm see. I, this is my first time looking at. it. I'm trying to see if we made is it. Is that that's the episode? Mm -hmm. you said. Well, I have to say to the because you talked watching. about Nikki. Now look at that's Jason and Courtney. Yeah. Oh, I made it. I yeah. made it. <laughs> yeah. What did you tell them what you said about about Nikki? No, I'm not going to reveal that. They need to wait. I'm trying to see if it made it. But I want to say I've been trying to piece it up, and I just don't see it happening now because of this damn show. I'm blaming Wildin' Out for this. Okay, here it is. This Courtney's coming to ask Jason a question. It. Sherry Shepard, yes. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, Sherry took a bullet. But I agree. He is M E S S Y messy. Now, Jason Lee, uh, according to my investigatory work, I heard that you have beef with the queen of rap, Nicki Minaj. Uh, and I also heard that you had a little beef with media mogul Karen Civil. Now, if these two women were drowning in a lake, which one would you save? Please look at the camera and tell us your answer. And remember that you keep it 100. Which camera would you like me to look at? That one right there. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, in my defense, <laughs> you asked the question, and that's the problem. If people would just stop asking yeah. me about this, <laughs> I wouldn't like say that. anything. <laughs> I the can't. Is, is there answer. something wrong with answering every question? Like, should I just not answer? I, I'm everything? the same way as you, Bobo. Right. You see, like we do. I, I, I have never met a question that I'm scared of. Yeah. Man, fuck that. I'm gonna say I'm gonna speak my truth. I'm not I've you lived like way fit. too long. And that that needs to lead the fit. <laughs> no, because then I'm gonna have the fit. producer of the show. I have someone has to win the game. Right. There's and never been a question that I've never I answer all questions. On that show, I gotta lose. But I there I'm not I answer Yo, everything. That, that show I was committed to winning, I ain't gonna you lie. Were so committed on that show. I was stressed. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Well, well there, I, I won't say, I won't lie, I said a lot. I said, I did go there to win. And I'm going to tell you whose fault it is. It's Chuck's fault. Because <laughs> I, I looked through the audience and seen Chuck in the back, and Chuck don't really give you nothing, but Chuck was dying. <laughs> so I, I kept going. One to of see our, Chuck. Yeah. And, and B. Simone, she's on Craig. the Red Squad on the other side going, Jason, please, you don't have to answer. I'm like, yes, bitch, I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> so obviously, it's going to be a great episode. That is from season 20 of Wild and Out. And. Like Jason uh, said, he's going to have the daily drop starting June 26th right here on Amp. And just in this interview alone, he <laughs> said, first of all, I know Jason and like y'all probably didn't like hear half the shit he said because <laughs> he was shooting at a lot of people. <laughs> and I just I just let that go. I'm not yeah, going. I'm I so know about if you listen back, he's uh, he was dropping some real tea even on this. So I can't imagine every single day live because this is different. There's no edits. Yeah. Well, my idea is I really want to bring it back to like Wendy William Radio Days. Like yeah. I really miss like not not as you know I don't I can't say how far left it's gonna go, but it really is gonna be a show where I say what I know and what I think, and and uh, you're gonna allow the people to come on and talk to you because that's the thing that's the beauty yeah. of AMP. It's yep. it's like where all of these people in the chat you see they be they be here all three hours talking back, 
and you can bring them in. You can talk to them, and they also all the barbs gonna be hating no, on you. No, that's fine. But I love it because these people. This is the best. So the Jason Lee experience. I'm kind of. You have the Jason Lee show on Revolt. That's just celebrity interviews and funny, messy games. Then the Jason Lee podcast is my opinion on what's happening. And then the daily drop is the fan experience. And this is one of my favorites because these are the people that built my career. These are yep. the people that literally everything that I'm able to do, every place I'm able to travel, every clothes, shop, everything, they're my life. They support me. I love interacting with the fans. And they also keep you grounded because they tell you what's happening in the real world. Because the shit that we live in is not real. The shit I want, I don't even want to go to parties no more. I'm in therapy telling my therapist to walk me through sobriety because I have to drink to go out now because these motherfuckers I'll be out with, I don't even want to see no more. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm over it, but I, I can't wait for this show. I can't wait to burn the internet up. Mm -hmm. And here's the deal. To everybody out there listening, the celebrities who hear whatever, please don't call me. Unless you, if, because we do have another segment called The Unexpected Guest, where, you know, Ricky Lake, ding dong, the guest. Th <laughs> yeah. That's when the celebrity can pull up. So if they have anything to say, my phone is not available. You got to pull up to the show. So that's so you tired of having private conversations? It got yeah, all these things. Yeah, I'm like you. I want to change my number. And just disappear. <laughs> could, you, could you imagine? You couldn't like you couldn't reach somebody who's saying everything that they want to say. You yeah. have to go to the show. Well, yeah. there. I mean, well, that's what I said. You you a real one. Uh, sometimes too real. Yeah. And that's why you know a lot of people in the industry are scared of you. Oh, I did and post this, this is freaky. Going to OnlyFans, though, went crazy. Everybody was just. Are like, you gonna do? Are you gonna show your balls uh, on OnlyFans? I don't know if I'm gonna bust it open, but I have an idea for OnlyFans. But like for me, like I'm not putting my ass on dick all on the internet. I'm not doing that. I mean, there's just that's just something that I just don't think is necessary. Like now, now at this point, it screams desperation for me to because I, I can get the internet to go viral all day long. I don't need to put my dick out there. Then, what, right. then what happens? Kelly Oprah. It and sounds I like you're judging, Jason. I mean, some people no, need to put the. No, your dick's on the internet. Yeah, I, I know I, he's gonna go there. No, I'm is not. It? Hell yeah! I'll, I'll it send it to I you. told you I would confirm. I'll send it, it to you. Was really his. <laughs> this is not about me. <laughs> I don't think this is the one I saw. I don't think it's right. Well, it can't be. Why that would be crazy? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, we're I, not about to turn this on me. This is about Jason's Abby dick, not my dick. Right. Why are we having this whole conversation, but ain't nobody looking at Abby like, ooh. I told him I, I would confirm. confirm. Could you stop Googling dicks oh, during the confirmed. show, Courtney? No, you remember what you did to Mortician, babe? Y'all wanted to have that little fun. I'm about to have my little fun with your little dick pic. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we're going to carry on. It ain't little. Uh, it ain't little now. We can uh, add well, it to I know. Now we know why this is called the Daily Cannon. Uh, here hey. we go. Yo, you know what's so crazy? They used to, like, force me at this job I was in. So crazy. This is a real story. People think I'd be making shit up to go viral. I really don't, but I was thinking, okay. So I was working for the union. They used to force us to be roommates at conferences, and I have a phobia about sharing rooms with people that I don't know because it's sort of like, you going to go to sleep first, nigga? Like, <laughs> you going to be okay. looking at me. If you fart in your sleep, I can't leave, and I got to smell the shit, and you old, too. Like, old farts. Like, so I had an issue. When I got to the room, it was a pastor. Nigga got a collar on and everything, and I'm looking at him, and he looking at me. <laughs> so we in Chicago. It's snowing outside. So and y'all doing the Lord's work. <laughs> Well, he was doing the Lord's work. I was about to go do the Lord's work. Oh, you know I mean? wow. You know, bring this nigga to his knees. But so anyway. Oh. <laughs> um, so anyway, I, I, I sit there and he looking at me. I said, so you really a pastor? And he goes, yeah. And I go, okay. I go, I'm going to just tell you right now, I don't really like sharing rooms with people. He's like, it's okay. You know, I could pray for you. And I said, you're not going to put hands on me. I'm leaving. I go to the club. I get drunk. I end up getting my dick sucked. It's a long oh, time Oh, so ago. at least it wasn't from anybody from no, the, the road. No, the pastor didn't suck my dick. Can you oh. imagine? Oh, that's what I, that's that's what I thought you were going. Oh, y'all yeah. thought the pastor sucked my dick? Uh -huh. That's, uh, that's what I was. Thank what? God that was not how the story ended. I ain't going to say a pastor ain't never did. Because oh, that be happening playing. for I'm real. I'm just playing. Because you know what? That throat ain't the pathway to heaven. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm already connected to God. So I came back. When I came back, he was sitting up waiting for me to pray. Did and you let I him said, pray for I you, said, Jason? No, I said, hey, nigga, listen. I just got my dick sucked. Like, I ain't finna do this with you. <laughs> that nigga got started. He... Speaking in tongues, left, got his shit left. Anyway, I had the room all to myself. You went, ah. Is that all you? That's the way the Lord works. See, the Lord, I didn't want to be in a room with him. Oh, so I went and did what I had to do, and then that nigga left. This might be the freakiest Friday we've ever had, well, ladies and gentlemen. I got a confirmation on Nick Cannon's pick, and wow. Told you. <laughs>
Oh, I had no. I thought it was Photoshop. Oh, it I, is. Oh, I sent it to Daniel Crowley. I sent it to the Wild and oh, Out people. All right, it's been good having you on the show, Jason. I would have known you that. Like, like, Daniel Wait, was I like, like, "How dare you send look, look me out?" Everyone know how to pick got out. I I asked him for a dick pic, and he sent me one in some white silk pants oh, and like a silk top. It was all cute. He gave you the baby. He he gave you the he gave it a three babies. Right, three. Three. We have three well, kids. I, you have three babies? I have three babies. <laughs> I see why Congratulations. she Wait, are any twins? <laughs> twins. The twins. Okay, twins. Yeah. Okay. I see why Their birthday was yesterday. Things. You should have came. Oh, happy birthday. I wasn't invited. You don't <laughs> invite were. me to shit. First of all, I first of all, Nick wait, can I just say Nick, one day I called Nick. This is how petty I am and how petty <laughs> this motherfucker right here is. Y'all love Nick. Nick Cannon is a petty motherfucker. <laughs> I called this nigga one day and the shit was green. I said, the uh -uh, fuck is green? Well, maybe, uh -uh. maybe, maybe. So I went to DM him on Instagram. He had unfollowed me. But I didn't know he unfollowed everybody. So I unfollowed him. <laughs> I was like, well, fuck you too. That's what everybody did. You know. And then I called Danielle and Danielle will let you, she'll answer the phone and let you rant before she tells you how wrong you are. I'm like, this motherfucker don't like me and I got his back. Fuck that. Blah, blah. She's like Jason he's literally disappeared from the whole world you're not and I'm like well is he okay <laughs> <laughs> well thank you no I, I don't follow anybody but we just started talking about it I think I'm gonna start following people yeah I'll follow you back yeah so face followed me yesterday yeah oh. shouts out to Babyface, one of the most amazing individuals in the world um <laughs> but yo this has been amazing uh I don't want to I don't want to go any further we've gone too far this uh, has been my favorite interview. Did we go too far? Yes, no. motherfucker. No. Anytime my dick is the subject I, of the conversation, we've gone too go far. further. Yo, I've never said this to you. Well, I have said thank you for wilding out. Uh, thank you for coming on my shows. And thank you for having a really nice dick. <laughs> Bye, I mean, ladies and crazy, gentlemen. Crazy, right? Crazy. crazy. Yo, his brother right here to the left, like, don't bring that shit over here. We know it right now. Right? That like nigga Jesus. tall and skinny, too. We know what's going <laughs> on. Yeah. Right in the family, yeah. Jamin. This educated. is not what we want to talk about. Educated Hello. penis. My auntie is listening to this show, Jason. Auntie, thank you and your family for your contribution. <laughs> I have a dick collage. I might have to add it to No. You. Girl, because that's real. I no. know. Ladies and gentlemen, we were in the. Uh, well, we so see, I, we got, so Jason, I, get the fuck out of here. Please. I gotta go? Yeah. Okay, well, fine. Fuck well, it. no, I have this to go. Uh, I'm sure there's some more shit. My shipping. daughter is having a Father's Day. Uh, Keep going back, sis. <laughs> Father's Day recital for. Uh, me and I'm excited about this. So everyone else, y'all can carry on, but really Jason funny. has already made me uncomfortable. Yay. Oh. Don't cancel me. Here we go. Nah, nah. This me too but this shit is, is out of control. It's gonna be men too up here at motherfucking Daily Candy. Men too. That was funny. <laughs> nah, me, me and Jason, we, we down forever for life. That's I, I rock with that dude because he is solid. He is. He keeps it thorough. And like I said, some people uh, can't handle it, but real ones recognize real ones. Uh, and congratulations to everything that you have accomplished building your own media thank empire you, the jason you. lee experience june 26th you can catch him here uh the daily drop uh and it is because people are, they've been looking for your tag yes so it's at the only jason the lee. only yeah jason lee. all spelled correctly yep. the only jason lee so you guys make sure you, that you follow him and uh i'm pretty sure this i'm trying to figure it's all gonna go viral we just gonna put this whole thing up there and just watch your messiness happen but you go viral every day Dion warwick and anita baker's fucking twitters need to be disabled <laughs> <laughs> you heard it we'll put it out there for you <laughs> All right. and scene jason lee everybody let's go throw to some more freaky music and keep this thing rocking it's the daily canon